Hello again, everybody. I'm Dean O'Neill. And I'm Nick Robinson. And this is new. This is new. Big time new. I've never been on this side of the camera. Yeah, how are you feeling right now? I'm pretty freaked out. Uh, but it's okay. It's all right. We'll figure it out. I need to take my glasses off. I yeah. forgot about that. On this side of the camera, we call ourselves the talent. Okay. And that means, you know, life is good for us. I've never been talented in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, um, to let everybody know, we've kind of commandeered a room down in the basement of the of Asbury. Yeah. Uh, this room has been used for many things. In fact, we were we came to you with the last couple of uh, podcasts. Yeah, the from podcast here. from here. Yeah. So, uh, and we just uh, uh, we've set up this area for the conversation community dot org, yeah. and this is what TCC means. And so this was this is where the guests will be from here. So we thought we'd give that a quick plug. Uh, our on the path. Which is the new name uh, for this the podcast. New name for this podcast will be in a different area of the room in a different set. Yeah. Uh, and I'm working on that as we speak, as you can tell. Um, so um, let's talk about that. Let's talk about TCC and why yeah. we are here. The Conversation Community is a new ministry uh, that's designed to reach people who uh, might not ever enter the doors of a physical church, but people who are still interested in exploring a life of faith, have questions about God or Jesus and how to apply it to everyday life. People who are interested in kind of the intersection of the conversation that happens when we put faith in conversation with raising a family, with working a job, with uh, a political landscape, with uh, world happenings, with all of the things that, act that affect our lives truly every day and putting them in conversation with each other to make a meaningful faith journey and life out of it and the goal is to not just have like a, a youtube show or something or even just a podcast where people can tune in and watch it but to build a community where people uh, can truly belong to one another don't just have a relationship with the people on the screen but also with one another uh, to be in conversation with each other sure and and, and another thing is, is the the key word is community. Yeah, uh, we want uh, the whole community to be a part of it. Um, we realize that people don't want to come to church sometimes, but want a church experience. And right. if they can or, have or that, or can't come to or church, or can't exactly. I've talked to a lot of people who have some kind of physical ailment that keeps sure. them from being able to be at church sure. in, in a brick and mortar church environment, and but they still miss connection. They still miss uh, having a connection to God, kind of in a worship service like that. Sure. Uh, uh, and things are just, there's a lot of things going on on Sundays nowadays. And, and Tell me we're not trying it. to take it away from anybody, but, but they, if, if, you know, kids, kids in soccer, kids yeah. in sports and things like that. And sports is an important thing. Yeah. My oldest daughter is seven years old and there's a, like a club cross country team that I was interested in her being part of. She's maybe not as interested as me, <laughs> right? Uh, but it, it's practices were on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights, uh, overlapping with church on Wednesday nights. They have six meets that they go to. Wow. Four of the meets are on Sundays. And, um, being a pastor's kid, that's not really an option for her right now. Right, like, right, we're right. pretty busy sure, as a whole family sure, on Sunday sure. mornings. It's, yeah, it is kind of an important day, right? Yeah. It's the only day I work a week. <laughs> it like, is. <laughs> you yeah, got to be there the one day. Should, should, yeah, yeah, no. He does a lot more than one day. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, that the, we don't want to the whole time on, on, on the conversation community. Uh, we realize that we're talking to Asbury, and we're not asking Asbury to stop coming to church and listening oh, no. to us. This is part of the under the umbrella of Asbury, and and what we've tried, we got our grant grant through Asbury. So, um, we we are starting, and uh, this is the beginning. Uh, this little set here, it's going to change. Uh, we're we're changing every day, you yeah. know, to try to figure out how best to serve what we want yeah. to happen. Well, and like. The brick and mortar versus the online church, uh, it's its going to be a both and for some people. Sure. Just for example, some people have kids at CMO and come to church at Asbury. Right. Some people only come to church and don't have kids at CMO. Some right. families come to CMO but don't come to church here. Right. Uh, you can be one or the other or both. And part of the conversation community and Asbury church, it's going to be people who some are part of both and some who are part of one. And all of that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Enough of that. Let's talk about the creative showcase oh, last yeah. weekend. 
we had a, an, I think, an A-plus Sunday this week. And it, to me, it was a culmination of a lot of what Asbury is. It was the kind of that dot when there were a lot of Venn diagrams overlapping, circles overlapping on our Venn diagram. Uh, there were families from CMO here to see their kids sing. We had artwork displayed from the CMO students. There were CMO teachers here helping the CMO students uh, feel comfortable and do their singing, had been part of helping them learn how to do the songs. Uh, there was Asbury church folk who were here to worship a good number. It was awesome. Our numbers were really great on Sunday, attendance-wise, brought good energy. There was uh, Asbury church folk and some of our neighbors and friends who had sure. artwork and crafts yeah. displayed it's really amazing. In, in the CWC right. and got to share that side of themselves and just so many great conversations spawned because right. of that sharing. Uh, there was uh, the performance section. There was uh, a family from the Asbury Conservatory who sure. performed there. Yeah. Uh, and it Laura, was, man, she did yeah, great. She did. She played a, a rag uh, song and yeah. it was it was cool. Right, right. Uh, and so we're just all of these parts of us kind of came together. We talked to about loving our neighbor as ourselves and putting sure. creativity into action. We right. had snow cones afterwards. Sure. You can't beat a snow cone. Come now, on. What was your favorite part of the day? I, honestly, I, I enjoyed kind of going around before and, 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 and seeing everything that uh, – uh, all, all the creativity that people put together. Uh, Chuck Vanetta. I mean, he had basically a, a, a very little part of his life on photographs. That yeah. He and his wife had taken photographs of. Um, Beth Smith, she, she's, the, her knitting is, is amazing. I mean, yeah. you could, I mean, it's like store knitting. It's it was amazing. amazing the talent of some of the people and and it wasn't all about talent you sure. didn't have to be sure. talented sure but there was so much talent on display as well uh dr Edith, watanabe <laughs> yeah with his fly fishing that was so cool yeah he was just fly fishing the whole place yeah, yeah fishing around. for men yeah, yeah exactly straight exactly. out of the bible yeah uh, so I, we're going to be looking at how to do a day similar to this in the future mm -hmm. how can we capitalize on on the real the strengths and maybe expand it or grow it uh and what does that look like and how can we keep the most important parts of it while we're expanding and growing it, I think it was just a fantastic day. I think it was a good start for something yeah. that's better to come. One of my favorite parts of the day was uh, there were some families who you could tell felt maybe a little uncomfortable and they wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. And so they left. But on the way out, there were hot dogs and snow cones. And so some <laughs> of the families who were on their way out of the door and they looked like they were in a hurry ended up staying around for half an hour or an hour more right. because there was like this safe place outside for their kids to be kids, for right. them to talk to people, have space, eat sure. hot dogs. And it was just, that just warmed my heart. Sure, sure. And, and it's, uh, again, it was a, a good way to, to, to let everybody see what yeah. Asbury's like. Yeah, and I was running around the whole time. I didn't get to hardly see anything. Yeah. I was just running around. Yeah, so non-negotiables, let's talk. Yeah, so there were, this, this Sunday we're starting a new sermon series called Non-Negotiable. And it's a three-week sermon series. And this is born out of the Asbury Pulse Checks that we just completed uh, in September. Um, they, we were going around listening to people about Asbury. And one of the ways I asked people to think was to think about Asbury five years from now. And what are the non-negotiables? What are the things that have to be true about us in five years from now? That if we, don't, if we didn't do them, we should have just packed up and gone home. Like they are right. crucial core values. And Asbury doesn't have like a poster that says these are our five values. Maybe one day we'll work towards that. I think sure. it could be helpful sure. um, to remind ourselves and to right. you know, point to everybody else who comes in. Um, but the, over these three weeks, I'm going to tackle three non-negotiables. They're the three that I brought up at these meetings. I think it's fair for the whole church to hear what my non-negotiables are. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that they're Nick's non-negotiables. I think they come from Scripture. They're based on God things. Mm -hmm. I think when people hear them, they'll say, yeah, those make sense. They might have their own to add, sure. but I don't, there's nothing I think to be upset about in, in the non-negotiables. They're, they're clear. You do a very good job in your ser sermon series, uh, I must say, to, to, to get the ball rolling, to get, the, to get people uh, commenting on things and, and joining in and things like that. And this is a perfect subject for that. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of, of non-negotiables on everybody's mind that yeah. they would like to get at least heard you know yeah. uh, and maybe that's something we do too we make we make uh, five that we can put up on a i see a banner in our in our in our, yeah. our future but and then and then just work off the work off mm -hmm. that so sounds like sounds very interesting i think and our, our first one is going to be that we're christ-centered 
So this week we're going to look at a section of the book of John. We're, we just finished seven weeks in John, and we're going to tackle it some more. Uh, it kind of feels like home now. We've been there for a little while. Sure. Uh, and this is a story about John the Baptist. Uh, John the Baptist was the forerunner before Jesus, op- making way for him, preparing people's hearts and minds for him, for them. And he was constantly telling people this all along the way. Uh, but at this, at this point in John, some of John the Baptist's disciples come to him and say, there's a guy over there, and he's like baptizing people, and people are flocking to him. He's getting more attention than you are at this point, it kind of feels like. <laughs> and, uh, you, it, you know, there's no tone in Scripture. Sure. But to me, when I read it, it doesn't sound like they're like happy about it. Right. To me, it sounds like they're annoyed, especially based on John's response. John's response is, good. This guy is, uh, this is the guy I've been pointing to. I must decrease and he must increase. My joy is complete because of this. Uh, and so we're going to be looking at how we're called to be Christ-centered, for us to decrease so that Christ can increase. Not because we are worthless, not because we don't have any value, but because we're pointing to someone bigger than us. Um, that our lives are pointing to a, a grace and a gift that is bigger than just us. We are part of it. John the Baptist had a role to play, mm-hmm. but we're not here to become famous. We're not here to make this about us. We're here to make it about Jesus. And to me, John had a role to play, and it's also a role that he passed on. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and that's just pretty well, amazing. And even and Jesus eventually passes on some of his roles. Sure. Like, we can't become saviors, but we become sure. leaders of the church. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And I think that was the whole the point yeah. of, the, uh, of the disciples. So, um, th- it's three weeks. Again, it's three, three, week, weeks? Three, three short weeks. Three short weeks. So, uh, you're going to try to get in a lot to, mm-hmm. to unpack. There's that word, unpack, for three weeks and, mm-hmm. and, and, and go from there. Um Anything else we'd like to talk yeah, about? Yeah, I want to say two more things. Sure. First, I want to say uh, we're going to be sharing the conversation video on uh, the newsletter, the Asbury Facebook page. So if you see it, if you could share on your show, socials too so that people know that we're here. Yeah. We already have a good number of views, a surprising number of views for how, sure. how little it's been shared. And I think we can really uh, make a big impact in our community by doing this. So if you see it, please share it after you watch it. And then the first conversation is all about uh, what a conversation is, but we wrap up with this question, what do you wish people talked more about? Because the conversation is about talking about those kinds sure. of things. Yeah. So if you have an answer for that question, comment on, uh, on this podcast or on the video when, uh, where you watch the conversation or send it an email to me at pastor at asburycolumbus.org. Because I want to hear what people want to hear about. Sure, sure. It's going to be important. And remember, the the last part of the conversation, community is the community. That's right. And community is is what we're trying to put together. Well, let me say, the community is already out there. We just wanted to come to Yeah, we're going to draw them together. Draw them together and everything. So, all right. Well, uh, let's end in prayer. And we'll just wait till yeah. next week. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for um, this beautiful season of fall. We pray that you would help it to... Um, be a season maybe there's things we need to say no to in life so we can say yes to the better things as the trees shed their leaves help us to think about what we might need to shed to to make more room for you can we think about this world uh, and we we're mindful of the people in in florida staring down uh, this hurricane that's headed their way a second one we pray that it would decrease Uh, we pray that you would uh, keep them safe and place of protection around them. We pray for the recovery efforts in just such a large swath of the United States that have been affected so so desperately. We pray for, uh, for peace in the midst of the wars that are raging around our globe. And we too pray for, that you'd be here with us in this moment, in this day, right now. He would help us be creative, use our creativity to find solutions uh, of justice and mercy and love, to use our creative creativity to express who you have made us to be and who we are right now, to use our creativity as a tool for exploring the world. And that through that and and through thinking and talking, that you'd help us find the non-negotiables of our lives, the things that are true for, that need to be true for us, that are so our core values, um, that they're worth not breaking ever. God, help us to base base our core values, our non-negotiables on you that foundation which doesn't fail. And so we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Until next week. Until next week. Good job. Good job.